Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hippolinda. On the agenda for today are Cyan and Magenta. Let's go. What? Excuse me. Cyan and Mirage. So, once again, we find ourselves in outer space. Incidentally, both of the uh, sisters who you encounter in space are ones who could go by Anne, Cyan and Android. I like how some of the sisters' names have, like, regular names embedded in them. Like, I love the name Demonica, because it's, like, the girl's name Monica, but it's demonic. And then there's, like, Samantha, who just has a normal name, and there are ones like Jelly Chan, which are just bizarre. So it's not a consistent naming scheme at all across the Twelve Sisters, but uh, some of them I like quite a lot. And here we are against Cyan. So you may be accustomed by now to uh, seeing small demonic allies of, uh, of each of the sisters. And here's a case where the sister is actually surrounded by enemies. These uh, little flying soldier guys, the manual calls them shock troopers, like tiny jetpack shock troopers, I think. These guys are actually Linda's friends. They're here to help us. And uh, so as Cyan knocks each of them down, we want to pick them back up because they're going to help us by shooting these lasers. You may have noticed that I was unable to harm or even grab onto Cyan at all before, but they shoot these lasers which like freeze and solidify her, which allows us to hit her. But now that she's back to her aqueous form again, we just go right straight through her. So we're going to have to wait for them to fire those freezing lasers again. But in the time being, I can pluck them off of the walls and pick them up from the ground as she knocks them back. The uh, next time, ooh, all right, so she has this shockwave attack which is almost entirely unavoidable and deals a lot of damage, as you can see there. It's possible to actually grab onto the ground and catapult yourself over it, but there's really not a lot of time to do that once you've seen it coming. Alright, let's go in for the Scarf Bomb attack. Ooh, it failed. Let's go again. See if we can get it again. I have plenty of points, so I can try this as many times as it takes, but I'm curious why it failed that first time. If both hands are unable to, to get a good hold, it doesn't always work. Alright, did that actually successfully exercise the Demon of Vanity, or did I not have time? I'm not seeing the little butterfly anywhere, which troubles me. It looks like I did not exercise the Demon, so I'm going to have to go for a third Scarf Bomb attack once the opportunity presents itself. For now, let's uh, scrape this guy off the wall here. Um, if you get all of the, uh, the Jetpack Shock Troopers active at the same time, then you'll deal significantly more damage to Cyan than you will if any of them are uh, incapacitated while they're shooting their lasers. You really want, if at all possible, to get every one of their lasers involved. Okay, not a lot of lasers right now, so this is not going to deal the maximum amount, amount of damage, but perhaps with a Scarf Bomb attack, I will be able to exercise the Demon of Vanity. Let's see if I can make it work. Looks like this is a nice long Scarf Bomb attack, so it should be enough, but it looked like it got cut short again there. Hmm, okay. Maybe I need all of them active in order to, uh, in order to actually perform the exorcism. I didn't know that that was the case, and, and but if that is the case, that means that it would be best to get your Scarf Bomb attack at the very start of the fight. That is a, um, a good rule of thumb in a lot of these fights. You'll see that it won't work on, um, well, uh, let's see. Actually, it will work on the next sister. I don't know what I was thinking. But yeah, uh, for the most part, you'll want to go directly for the Scarf Bomb attack since they're normally, uh, you're, you're normally able to right at the start of the fight. So I'm not going to bother doing a Scarf Bomb here because I don't have all of the Shock Troopers active, but since she is solidified, let's get some attacks in. And as you see, I think I actually got a point there. Sometimes uh, scoring good hits on, uh, on the Sisters will actually give you points the same way that attacking Benita Zako will, but it's not... I'm not really sure um, in a lot of the uh, cases what actually does it. It seems like... Um, if you play into the gimmick of the boss and hit them at their most vulnerable point is when uh, is when you score the point. But uh, I'm not even sure that it's possible against all of the sisters. Okay, it looks like I have all of the shock troopers right now, so let's go for a scarf bomb. If this doesn't work and this doesn't exercise the demon, then uh, I may accidentally defeat her without exercising it. In which case, we'll have to try again. Let's see. Did I get it? Well, she exploded. Oh, but it wasn't, it wasn't good enough. I did not exercise the demon of vanity, so we're going to have to do it again. Let's, uh, let's head on out the door and try again. At the very least, there is a reward for defeating a sister with the bad ending. The cost of uh, the door to enter their realm is reduced from whatever it normally is to zero. So I didn't have to spend any points on this refight because I did complete the fight once. Okay, let's see if I can, uh, now that they're... Oh, they appeared to be shooting the lasers, but then they stopped. I guess uh, I misunderstood something. Wait, did one fall down? Get up! 
get up. <laughs> we cannot afford anyone sleeping on the job right now. I've got to get all the lasers and then go for the Scarf Bomb attack at the earliest opportunity. And let's try to deal as much damage as we can while still exercising that Demon of Vanity. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> I seem to be holding on for long enough. I guess the more lasers they shoot, the longer she's vulnerable. There it is. So you need all of their lasers shooting her in order to have enough time to pull off the entire Scarf Bomb attack and therefore exercise the demon. And now that we have exercised that demon, all I have to do is deal enough damage to reduce her life uh, to zero. And uh, she actually can defeat me if I'm a little bit too slow about that. As you can see, that shockwave attack of hers. If she manages to hit me with that, I don't know, five times or so, I guess I'm done for. Not really realistic, but if, um, if you didn't figure out, I guess, quickly enough when you're supposed to be attacking her or that you're supposed to be helping the little... Uh, jetpack troopers, then uh, you might, things might go wrong. But for the most part, this is a hard fight to lose. You just have to actually pull off the Scarf Bomb attack at least once is the hard part. But if you're smart like I was this time, you'll know to do that at the earliest opportunity when you still have all of the uh, shock troops still active from the start of the fight, and you shouldn't have any problem at all. Let's pick up this guy off the wall here. Interesting story. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't know how uh, the word cyan was meant to be pronounced. I always thought it was cayenne like the cayenne pepper, I guess? I think this persisted, like, to the point when I played Final Fantasy VI for the first time, I thought the character Cyan was meant to be pronounced Cayenne. I don't know at what point I realized how it was actually meant to be pronounced, but it was probably in my adulthood, which makes me wonder how many other words there are that I read as a kid that I still don't know how to properly pronounce. Uh, hopefully none as commonplace or embarrassing as Cyan, but there you have it. Let's see. Looks like they're all flying right now. Everyone seems to be in good shape. Oh, there's one on that wall over there. Let's go pluck him off. The thing you don't want to do is um, turn your back on her when you're plucking someone off the wall and miss out on a laser phase, because if you're not paying attention, you might not notice that the, the shock troopers have started their attack phase, and you definitely don't want to miss out on one of those cycles, if at all possible. Like right here, I started to go for that guy on the ground, and I almost missed out on this phase. You really want to get as many attacks in as you can during this part, because they only come up every so often. Hey, and I got a point even, wonderful. She's still solid right now, but I couldn't deal damage there, huh? Okay, was there still a guy on the ground somewhere? I thought there was. Um, maybe not. Maybe it picked himself up. Uh, there's one on the wall there. Okay, let's go get that guy from over there. Yeah, definitely one of, uh, one of the cooler sisters. I love how she's, like, a, 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 a solid liquid, almost. Like, she's viscous, but uh, she can be solidified by the little guy's lasers. I also like how you have the allies at all in this fight. There are none other... There are no other fights in the game that are like that. Everything in this game is, like, out to kill Linda, except these little guys here, but for um, whatever reason, they're sort of secluded in this realm. You can't bring them with you to any of the other fights once you meet them. I guess they're like the space police, and they're only interested in policing their sector of the galaxy, so they're not interested in going anywhere else with you. But I'm happy to have their help for the short time that they're available to me, and I'm happy to help them out in return. If they get stuck to the wall, I can pull them off. They'd be helpless on their own. They would just all get stuck to the sides. All right. <laughs> One more guy over there, and I should be able to finish this fight off in the next round, which is for the best because I'm below half of my health right now. can only take so many more hits. Oh no, everyone's sleeping on the job. Get up, guys. We still have a fight to do here. It's, it's morning, and we have to fight. <laughs> Okay, this should be the final blow right here, or the next one, maybe. Ah, okay, that was good enough. <laughs> I wondered why they all broke off so early, and that's because the fight was over, and I did it. Second try, but altogether not too bad. And with that, I guess we should finally go check out the fourth and final EX world after this, and then the last two sisters. Mirage, and later, Spirit. Okay, here we are in the EX Ice World, and I really do not like this place. I think the first time I ever came here, uh, it was pretty early in the game, and I hadn't really gotten a handle on the regular controls yet. So here, where ice is in effect, I found myself dying a lot. So this game's already a little bit slippery, but here, as you can see, I stop moving and Linda continues to slide for another foot or so. And furthermore, it's really difficult to tell where you're meant to go here. I'm still not entirely sure 
<laughs> how to navigate my way around this place. So let's just look around and try to find that door. I'm not terribly interested in getting points at the moment. As you can see, whoa, 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 <laughs> I just fell off like so. Oh, and that's another thing. So whenever you fall off in EX World, you always respawn at the same place you entered and not near where you fell off, which means that it's possible to get very close to the door in this EX World and, uh, and then fall off and have to start over. And it's really frustrating. There's no other way out. Like I can't enter the menu and escape the level. You have to get to the door. Um, as I was saying, I have 50 points, so uh, actually attacking these Zako is not my highest priority. And there's the door over there. Okay, I think I'm going to make it. But uh, you have to make these like blind jumps down. <laughs> you, um, if you if you use L2, you can go into this like pseudo first person view and look around. Oh no, she pushed me off. That Benita Zako just pushed me right off the side. Okay, but um, as I was saying, if you don't go over to the, e the edge and look down like that, it might not be entirely clear where you're meant to jump off. These are kind of blind jumps. Let's see, not over here, over this way. I think that should make it. Okay, wonderful. No, no, they're so malicious. Every, like I said, everything in this game is like out to kill Linda, except those little space police guys. If only they were here to help me now. Okay, uh, where was the exit from here? Everything looks the same, so I, I don't have a, an easy time navigating. There it is, there's the door, let's get over there. Jump once, jump twice, am I going to make it? There's the door, pull it open, okay, good. <laughs> We're alive, we made it. And that's all for EX Worlds. So now, let's go fight Mirage. So Mirage, and a pretty appropriate name for the desert-like environment in which you encounter her. Also, it could be said to fit the theme I was talking about earlier, like if you assume her original name was Mira, but that's a little bit of a stretch. I can't help but wonder though if, uh, if it's also a reference to the earlier treasure game Silhouette Mirage, which uh, I believe was on the PS1. I still need to play that game. Don't know a whole lot about it, but it looks really cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, Mirage here. Speaking of things that look cool, this is one of my favorite sister designs in this game. And she's one of the easier ones to fight once you figure out the gimmick. Now, where'd that oasis go? Okay, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to plant myself directly in this oasis, because we'll want this water for later. Um, actually, what I should do is uh, follow the advice that I gave myself in the last battle, and go immediately for the scarf bomb before doing anything else while I have the chance. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to actually be able to finish this scarf bomb attack since she's doing this tornado. I might... It doesn't seem to be uh, releasing me, though, so let's see. Did I exercise the Demon of Vanity during that attack? I'm not sure. I did, actually. Okay. And this is why I wanted to be near the Oasis. So she turns into this, like, sandstorm twister thing. And when she does that, she surrounds herself with all of this sand. And if you draw her into the water, it'll turn all of the sand into mud and she'll be paralyzed. And then you'll be able to do a very powerful attack against her, which also nets you a point, which is your uh, reward for figuring out the trick to this fight. Uh, I actually didn't figure out that trick until like the second or third time I, I fought this enemy. So uh, she's definitely defeatable without it, you can just sort of go for the straightforward route. But uh, it's pretty cool if you do actually use the oasis to your advantage. What I think would have been a nice touch is if the oasis dries up after you use it, so you're forced to like go to a different part of the map and find where the next oasis has appeared in order to do this to her again but that's not really how it works. So if you go right to the Oasis at the start of the fight, you're pretty well protected for the rest of it, and the fight becomes pretty simple. Oh, I thought I had a hold right there. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this attack in. There we go, perfect. Yeah, it's a good time to use the torpedo attack just to guarantee that you take full advantage of that weakened state of hers. And this fight's almost wrapped up. Between the, the damage I've dealt from those two, uh, those two mud towers and the scarf bomb attack, she's just about finished up already. And, uh, okay, so you can see she's doing this other attack here. Well, she has these, uh, these missiles, which work exactly like Miss Mecha's, I'm pretty sure. You just touch them and they change their target back to her. And, uh, she also has an attack where, uh, little spouts come up from under the sand and they, like, chase you around. But I think that either that doesn't affect you when you're in the water, or maybe it just wasn't a problem for me this fight. But, in any case, that was, uh, that was a brief battle against Mirage. Definitely one of the, uh... Cooler sisters, you can see she's like wrapped up like a mummy, but her arms are not attached to her torso, like they're not inside the mummy part, they're up on her head. Anyway, we'll see that in the, the Gallery of Shame. Let's head over there now. The Gallery of Shame is nearly full. We only have one sister, Spirit, still left. As you can see, it shows a, a Benita Zako here, if you, haven't, uh, if you haven't found the sister who belongs in this particular slot yet. But that's the only such slot we still have. Down here, we have Mirage. As you can see what I was talking about, 
yeah, no arms on that torso. They're up inside her, her hat instead, which is really creepy. Anyway, let's learn a little bit about Mirage. She always enjoyed Egyptian culture and mythology, which is fitting. In her vision of perfect beauty, she pictures herself as a mummified temptress in a sarcophagus outfit. Mirage uses the desert to her advantage, creating a tornado of sand to chase after Linda. If only there was some way to make the sand turn solid. If only there was. Okay, and also today, we met Cyan. <laughs> and you can see here, she's posing with uh, each of the little shock troopers. The smallest in the family, Cyan always felt herself inferior to her sisters because of her height. In her demonic form, she's become a towering, gigantic, stationary alien, waging war against a battalion of tiny jetpack shock troopers. The troopers are Linda's ally in this battle, and Linda must keep them in the air and fighting if she wants to defeat Cyan. So that's all of the sisters but one. Join me next time when we do battle with Spirit. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you then.